Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today I want to show you the card game God of War. This is published by Simon Games and I have to say I know that a lot of people had a bit of a challenge with this game at the demo when they demoed it at Gen Con, including us. We had a demoer that did not understand the rules and it made the game not the greatest. But fortunately, I was lucky enough to be by the rule book and I was glancing through it and we actually fixed a bunch of things during our play. And it's actually a really fun game. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, mu it's much more of a puzzly game than what you would think. And I will say, I'm not sure the game will have legs after you've defeated the whole thing. You might want to either hope for expansions or you might pass it along. But what it does provide to you is a really unique deck building uh, experience. So without further ado, I think the easiest thing to do is just show you guys how the game plays and you can make that determination yourself for when this comes out in October. In this video, we're going to set up the game and then we'll go ahead and jump into the playthrough in our next videos. Let's start it. The first step for setting up God of War is choosing your characters. Now, there is a solo variant that's in the rulebook. I'm not going to play with it. I want to show you co-op, okay? So I'm going to play with three individual characters here. We have Kratos. We all know who Kratos is, if you know God of War, which actually I have to say I don't know the IP that well, but I know who Kratos is. We have Freya and we have Mimir. Mimir, I know that Jerry had a challenge understanding how to play that character, so that's one of the things I'm really excited to show you guys, how Mimir works. Each character will get their own deck of 14 cards, and we will go ahead and shuffle those up, and you'll start with seven cards in hand, which we'll do just before we start the game. Each character will start at the level zero on their rage track. Whenever they do an attack action that has a symbol that looks like this, that means that they can increase their rage track by one. Now, please note that's only for when you do an attack action, not when you use that card for an interact. That's something we did wrong. So when you do an interact action, you will not increase your rage if you're using that symbol. Uh, but so we'll all start with that. We all also have different variants of health. Kratos has 10 health, Freya has eight, and Mimir only has four. Let's look at these each individually. Kratos is probably your most straightforward character here. He has the 10 health. His ability is Spartan Rage. Add plus three to your next attack and heal three damage. So after he gets his rage track up to five, you can activate that any time during your turn and use that ability. And the healing is what's really helpful. <laughs> Freya here has what's called old magic. You can place a Freya token, and she has two Freya tokens that she starts the game with, game out with. Place a Freya token on any hero. A Freya token may be discarded to cancel all incoming damage from one source. So you can see Freya's going to help Kratos soak that damage, or maybe she'll even go up there and try and soak some damage. And this way she can help. But as you can see, that's going to take her a little longer. She's going to take her six uh, levels on her rage before she can activate that ability. Now, Mimir is a very different hero from the other two, very much a support hero. All I can think of when I see this hero is Steve. <laughs> if you guys know Steve at all, this would be Steve's hero, I guarantee you. So you choose a hero to attach yourself to at the beginning of each round, and they become your carrier. You may choose to take attacks uh, instead of the carrier. Mimir does not have an actual turn, but you must still draw an upgrade card for him, which that all makes sense when we do our playthrough. But yeah, he doesn't even have a turn, you guys. Yeah, and that's why Jerry didn't like the game, and they didn't explain how this guy works. And if you don't understand how he works, ouch. <laughs> Not even having a turn, it's like, what am I even supposed to do? So yeah, I'll make sure to show you that. His ability is Knowledge and Wisdom. During the scene activation, draw an extra upgrade card, choose one of them to activate, and place the other in the bottom of the upgrade deck. Gives you a little bit of manipulation on which enemies are going to activate, and also what cards you'll have to choose to upgrade. You'll also want to grab out the two status cards, there's Poison and Stun, and then the Shattered Crystals as well. Those will be placed off to the side, you may be trying to gain Shattered Crystals for a certain reason, and enemies might stun you or put Poison in your deck. Next what you'll do is you'll grab all six of the quest cards and randomly grab three of them, placing one at the bottom and two above it. Then you're going to grab the four final boss cards, grab three of them, place three of them out, and place the other one back in the box. This is how you're going to play the game. You're going to first try and complete this scene. Then you're going to choose one of these two scenes to complete. And if you complete it, then you can choose one of the three bosses to complete. The fun part is, if I decide to play the Travelers, I will then flip the Grendels over, and there's a hindrance that will affect us for that specific uh, quest or scene. Then when we move to this scene, I'll choose one of these three, and the other two I'll flip over, and we'll have two hindrances. Okay? 
pretty cool how that works. Uh, I will say during our demo, we played this scenario and then tried the Grendels and got annihilated. But we did do a lot of things wrong. <laughs> so when you move from the uh, scenario here to this scenario, you actually get to keep all the upgraded cards in your deck, but you will take out any poisons, any status cards, and any shattered crystals. We started all the way over at the beginning, and that really hinders you because there's going to get a hindrance here as well. So yeah, anyways, what I'm planning to do today is just show you the Elfheim scenario. And then if you guys really want to see another one, maybe I'll do another one. But you have to remember, this game is about a puzzle. So when you see one of these, you may not feel like you need to play it. And so I don't want to spoil too much because, yeah, you might figure out the puzzle, so to speak. Of course, I will say to you, I don't know the puzzles, so I'll probably fail, and then it'll be okay, but just letting you know. We have Elfheim, a realm plagued by endless war, locked in an eternal battle for the light of Elfheim. The Norns see no winner to this senseless war. Instead, a party of legendary figures claim the light for themselves. In order to win, we need to defeat that named person <laughs> and destroy the hive. Now what we see up here, this number denotes which scene cards or scenario cards we need to pull out and use. They have them in these nice packets, but you would just have to look for ones that have the five on them. Here is the example of one scene card. It's gonna tell you where it needs to be located based on what you see up here. So this tells you it's on the upper portion because it's on the top of the card and it's the farthest over card on the left. Now if I go to the next card, you can see it's in the upper portion, but it's the second card on the left. Comparing that to this card, this card tells you it's on the bottom right side of the scene. So I'm going to put all these together and it's going to make an awesome picture. This is one of the really cool parts of this game. Here we have it. Here's our scene. And look at this amazing art. <laughs> it looks so cool. So what we have up here, we've got three different enemies. we got an enemy up here. This denotes the health of the enemy, three health. It attacks at range one uh, or attacks a, a range attack for one damage. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is another enemy. Now, you see this symbol? This symbol denotes that the health of this symbol is actually tracked over here, and that's Slavetskver, okay? And that is one of the things we need to defeat. He's got 50 health, though, <laughs> okay? And then this is how he attacks here. It's a melee attack. Uh, it does two points of damage and cannot be blocked by any shields. It also denotes where it's going to attack. It's going to attack this location, this location, and this location. And you'll understand how that works in a second. We have another enemy over here that attacks range, has three health. We've got an enemy down here that has three health, attacks one melee. It attacks in this location and the location over here. And then over here, we have another enemy that has three health, attacks for one in this location and this location. Remember, we also need to destroy the hive, and the hive is over here. Now, we can just do damage to the hive because the hive has 60 health. But we also have an interact here where we can discard two crystals to be able to do 30 points of damage. So that's pretty cool. So we maybe want to gain some of those crystals to then be able to take out the hive. Now we don't know yet how we're going to gain crystals. We're going to have to figure that out. There are lots of different symbols that you see on here. And I think I'm going to explain the rest while we play. Just note that this is the, the final boss we need to defeat. He's got 50 health. And this is the hive that we need to destroy. And it has 60 health. The last part of setup is shuffling up this huge upgrade deck. Now this upgrade deck is going to be used for two things. One, at the end of every player's turn, we're going to flip the top card and look at the symbol that's up here. See how that's an F? We'll look at any enemy that has that F symbol next to it. Those enemies are going to attack. Then what we're going to do is put this in a pile of cards that at the end of the round, we can then purchase one or you know just gain it for free. Each character will choose one to gain. Now, I mentioned that enemies attack certain columns, and you can see it based on these arrows where they're going to attack. So what we get to do at the beginning of the game is choose where we want to be located. And we can be up to two characters deep in one column. So we could place both of these characters here. This would mean that Kratos is in the front and um, Freya is in the back. If Freya is in the back, she will not take any damage when being attacked. Instead, um, Kratos will be attacked. So a lot of this game is going to be about determining, well, which column do I want to be in? Because I can also only attack within that one column. If I have melee attacks, I can only attack the bottom row. If I have ranged attacks, I can hit the bottom row or the top row. Now, Mimir has to connect himself to a specific character. And I think to start off with, he's going to uh, attach himself to, to Kratos. To start the game, we'll have Kratos in the front with Mimir attached and Freya in the back. 
For our final piece of setup, we'll go ahead and draw seven cards each. So we each have seven cards. We have to denote who our first player is. We'll have our first player be Kratos, followed by Mimir, followed by Freya. I hope you guys are excited. Let's go ahead and jump into this playthrough.